Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Force here, and today we will be checking out Arclash Legacy. This is a single player tactical RPG with an active pause system similar to that seen in Baldur's Gate and Dragon Age. The game itself is actually based off of the Confrontation figurine game series, and it's being developed and published by Cyanide Studios. Oh, so, a there's a fair bit of things to talk about here when it comes to this game. Uh, it's a fairly in-depth title in terms of the combat system and all the various features, so please bear with me as I take you through step by step. Uh, basically, in the game, again, the combat itself is done with an active pause system, meaning whenever you enter combat, you can pause on any moment's notice to survey the landscape and figure out what you want to do, how you want to respond to the opponents. Now, in terms of the party, you've got a party size of four. There are eight total characters with which you can choose from in the game, but you can only have four in your party at any given time. Characters that I have at the moment are my tank here, a rogue type character, a ranged, uh, a ranged attacker who is also primarily a healer, and then a ranged DPS dealer, pretty much the mage unit. Now they all have their varying abilities. You'll notice that every time I click on each one of those units, or more easily, I can just go ahead and use the tab targeting system. But yes, anytime I select one of these units, it is going to uh, show you their skills right there at the bottom. Now let's quickly go over those skills before we get into combat so things aren't so confusing for you. Uh, so starting off with the tank here, the tank has got basically a taunt, a self-heal, a, uh, a, a increase to physical and magic armor, and then a heavy damage dealing attack. Now, the interesting thing about this tank class is that in order to use abilities, you actually sacrifice HP. There's no mana or any other system like this. You get rid of... Oh! Combat's happening right now <laughs> as enemies came down to engage. Alright, fantastic. So, you sacrifice HP in order to get your attacks off. The rogue here has an energy-based system. I've got a bleed, a increase to attack speed, a, a, a debuff that removes a positive effect from an opponent, and then also an increase to damage for the next three attacks. Here is my healer, a basic ranged attack for her, and then for her abilities, there is a skill shot based heal. There is a, a, a damage, it, it damages one of your allies, but increases your mana as a result. Then we've got the leech grain here, which is going to be a heal around an enemy. So you put it on an enemy, and then after a certain amount of time, it'll heal all allies around it. And then the last one is the ability to take effects, positive effects from your opponent. And then finally here, we've got our mage character, I've got a ranged nuke here and Celestial Blow, an AoE knockdown, which is very cool. A, actually, one healing ability for the mage, uh, which I can cast on any one of my allies. And then I've got these elemental chains, which are a debuff of attack speed for the opponent. So, those are all the abilities that I have for my characters. Now let's go ahead and hop into combat. Now, whenever you engage in combat, you can set it in the game settings so that it automatically pauses. That's why what you just saw happened, happened. These guys came down to engage, my units turned around to fight them, and then the game automatically paused itself. But at any given time, I can unpause and repause just like that. So what you want to do is whenever you go into a fight, the first thing you're going to want to do is just take a look at the opponents and look at their health, uh, look at their resource, and also look at important stats like their damage, the type of damage, their defenses to physical and magic attacks, and then you can also take a look at their abilities. Now these are just some basic units with only one ability each, uh, except this guy I think has two. Yeah, he has got two abilities. Uh, so they have got some just some basic damage damage dealing attacks here and the strength of the line just does basic physical damage to a target. Uh, this guy is special though, he is, uh, I think they're called elites, he's, he's basically just a higher tier unit and he particularly has this really strong ability that will reflect 250% of damage that he takes uh, back to the attacker. Now, the thing with this is, this is an increase effect that I can remove in with several different ways. I can either use his uh, his removal or I can steal it with a uh, Wenderu. So I've got choices in terms of how I want to deal with that or I can just ignore him because it's a reflect damage and if I don't attack him, I don't have to deal with it. 
get these archers here. Uh, you can see they are basically fairly evenly uh, evenly defensed here with physical and magic. These these melee characters are more susceptible to magic attacks, so I'd want to focus magic attacks on them. And these guys have the same buff right here, which will increase their attack speed. So that would be actually something that'd be really good to steal. So I'm going to start off here. I'm going to have her. I can activate any one of these. Uh, I, you can either cycle through with tab once you've got them all selected, or you can click on them individually. And then you're just going to want to issue orders, just like any old pause RPG combat system will work. Now you can individually click on these things, or you can use the hotkeys, which I'll be using the hotkeys and it just goes Q, W, E, and R and that's how you're going to actually grab these. And then you can also stack orders again just like it's pretty standard for this pause system. So I'm going to tell uh, Wenderu here to first steal that buff and then I'm going to tell him to actually attack right after. And all your queued up, uh, queued up actions will be displayed right here when you have that, a, a character selected. And since he is the first target of attack, I'm going to have uh, our rogue go straight for him as well. I will have my tank go straight for this guy, and then I will have my mage uh, go straight for here. And now I'm going to drop this, and that all those actions will take place. The buff was stolen, so now he's got increased attack damage. Now, he is starting to take some damage here, so I can pause, and what I will do is actually, I'll bring up his defenses with the Plasmic Silica, and then I'm going to actually do the self-heal here as well, and then I'll tell him to go back to attacking that guy. I want to ignore this target for the moment because he's got that reflective shield up. These guys are going to continue to attack. I'm going to have her cast her nuke now, and I won't take you step by step for what I'm doing. In fact, I'm probably going to stop pausing right now because once you get used to all the different spells for your characters, you don't have to be consistently pausing. So I'm going to cast a heal right here with him. And this guy is about dead. And we're going to go just like that. And now he is getting pretty low. And since we have two new guys coming into the mix, the first thing I want to do is take a look at what exactly is going on. So we're going to click on these guys and see what they do. Uh, they've got actually very high defenses to both physical and magic. Uh, they've got a basic attack here that does physical damage. And then the secondary ability here is a bite that knocks down an opponent, uh, inflicting damage as well. So there you go. So that is their secondary ability. Now, we're going to go ahead and probably focus down this guy at the moment. I'm going to tell my entire party to do that. I would like to heal him up. And I can also do a heal with her right here. Now, again, I could be pausing for all of these actions, but since I'm fairly aware of uh, all of these characters' abilities after playing the game for a, a short amount of time, um, I, can, I can pretty much handle it without all the pausing. Now, there are going to be instances where you're going to need to pause consistently uh, just to make sure you're getting off everything you need to be getting off because this game uh, can be very punishing, especially in very large fights. Uh, it just can be very, very difficult to deal with certain groups of opponents. Uh, there is a loot system. You'll notice I just picked up a piece of loot. Bef before we jump into that, uh, we're actually going to go and do a boss battle here. Uh, I'm going to save the loot system until we get a little more loot to show you. So we've got these little statues surrounding this central area here. So we will activate all of those. And then we're going to get a nice little mini boss fight. And the first time I actually came upon that boss fight, it was uh, pretty intense. So I'm looking forward to showing it to you. It's a rather neat little engagement. Okay, and we've got one more statue. We also have a chest here. So we'll pick that up. We get some loot with that. But again, we'll save the uh, looting portion of the game until after this fight. All the statues have been activated, and here comes the boss. Alright, so as always, whenever you encounter a new enemy, the first thing you want to do is take a look at them, see what their abilities are, and see what you need to do to deal with it. So, first of all, he's got some buffs here. Uh, he's got an aura, healing sparkles continuously, so any sparklings around him will be healed. Also has the support aura, reduces the attack speed. Uh, 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 it reduces the speed of attack at each attack. Very interesting. Okay, so let's take a look at the abilities here for the major elemental of light. Uh, Pillar of Energy. Elemental channels a link. It's targeted a maximum of 10 seconds. It will root and inflict magic damage on the target. 
Second one is this blinding here, which will blind for 10 seconds all enemies within six meters. Blind just means your attacks miss. Uh, Storm of Light, after five seconds of casting time, the elemental immobilizes for five seconds uh, its target and then inflicts 400 damage on it. That's pretty intense. Uh, the effect can propagate up to three times towards an enemy within less than four meters, inflicting magic damage. So it's sort of like a chain there. And then lastly, the Word of Strength. Uh, when the elemental has only 50% of its HP, it decides uh, as a defense to drain all the health of its sparklings. Those are going to be little minions that are coming. And by casting the skill, the elemental enrages itself and permanently increases 80 points of attack damage and 25% of its speed of attack. So this is the boss. These are his abilities. We actually have a few passive ones that we have to pay attention to as well, which are the ones that we noted, noted there. Okay, so I know Sparklings are coming, I know he's got the ability to do some massive damage, and I know, I know he also has this Chain ability and this Blind ability. So what I'm going to want to do is actually split up my units. I want to try to make sure that they aren't uh, all right next to each other first and foremost. And then what will happen is we're going to have, um, we're going to have these guys go straight for some attacks. And actually I think I'm going to have her steal, the, steal his abilities right there, and I'm going to start him uh, with the defense and then for the attack and then over here and then you can go straight for the bleed and then after that Why don't you increase your attack speed? Okay, so unpause here we go And now we've got these minions here, so these minions are attacking doing damage But the most important thing that we're gonna want to pay attention to is they actually have this healing thing that they will cast and I need to get in the middle of it which is what I'm doing here so by you basically body blocking those heals uh, you can really save yourself a lot of trouble so I'm gonna make sure that we have got consistent action here for all these guys And we're gonna go try to bring her down to 50%, at which point she will sacrifice all of her sparklings. There we go. And now she is enraged. So at this point, I need to be very careful because she is enraged, so I'm gonna make sure we get some healing going on here. And just try to focus on DPS. Self heal. Heal. And we do have one guy very low at the moment. So I'm going to steal some health from him to heal up here. Just like that. And then we're going to actually do that a couple more times. And I should be okay at this point. So as you can see, again, um, I could probably be pausing constantly here, just because uh, this this these boss fights, fights like this, can get rather intense, and you, you really got to make sure uh, you know that you're on the ball, basically. And the only reason I was able to do that with relative ease is because I'm pretty well versed in all of these characters' abilities and what, just essentially what they're capable of. Okay, now. We've got all that loot, so why don't we go ahead and take a look at the looting system within this game. Uh, also, our characters are now up to level 4, which means we can take a look at the skill trees. So, uh, there are four loot slots for every single character. There is an earring slot, a necklace slot, a relic slot, and a ring slot. You're going to notice it's amulets, rings, earrings, and relics is how that's divvied up. And you essentially have this shared loot system, and you can cycle through your individual characters to decide what pieces of loot you want where. So for example, I've got this piece of loot that dropped here for the amulets. It's plus 5% physical damage and magical damage. Uh, so I can choose who I want that to go to. Well, let me take a look at this guy here. He's actually got a pretty good amulet right now. 4% uh, physical, 2% magical, plus he's got some armor. So let's see if this can go. Oh, this one has no amulet, so why don't we give her that? That's going to give her an extra magical damage. We also have one for plus 5 magic armor. Well, she doesn't have anything, so we're going to throw that on her. Let's take a look at the rings now. Ooh, first of all, let's start off with this epic ring. 5% physical damage, plus 30 HP, multi-critical hit. Ooh, that is... 
actually really, really good for the rogue character. So we're going to throw that right on it. Much better than this 30 max HP ring. Uh, this one is 4% healing received, plus uh, I've got some physical and magical armor. That might be good for the tank. Let's take a look at what the tank currently has. Uh, I think the one the tank has at the moment is actually a little bit better, so let's see if this can go anywhere else. Uh, healing received for the mage. I don't really ever have to heal the mage. Um... Healing received for this guy. Yeah, might as well. That's better. That's pretty much, yeah, might as well throw that on there. Okay, so we've got this one, this one, and what is this one? Uh, Multi-critical hit minus duration of magical effects. Actually, I don't even know that I'm going to use that one, because I don't think anyone... That might be good for the rogue, but... Well, actually... Yeah, why don't we put it on here? I'm not entirely positive if this mage takes... Ha gets benefited from the multi-critical hit, but I'm assuming. Oh, you know what? Okay, I see. Yeah, that's definitely that's that's definitely a big that's a great increase for her. Fantastic. Okay, let's move on to the earrings now. So yeah, it's pretty simple. Again, it's just this four slot system. You're gonna get one of these four pieces of loot that you can equip to your characters. Uh, this one is two percent healing done. This one is mana regeneration. This is more mana regeneration than one I have now, so we're going to put that on. And healing done, we'll go to the healer, of course, and he doesn't have anything, so. And then we've got some armor. Might as well get... Eh, physical... He doesn't have any mana, but throw that on. And then we've got a couple of relics here, let's see. Mana, regeneration, max HP. And this one is healing done. Well, let's go to this, to this to the healer. This is better than that, yes. And then uh, mana regeneration, let's check the mage. Yes, this is absolutely an increase. And then this one is max HP plus physical armor. Let's check the tank. Um, healing received is better. Yeah, why don't we throw that on that one? Okay, there you go. So that is all the loot that I have. We also have the skill system. So again, we've got four skills for every one of those characters, and you can specialize these however you want. So what I'm basically going to be doing, this was actually the first level at level four when you get your first skill point. And you're just, again, can increase them, and then there's eventually a split in terms of uh, exactly what your ability does. Now let's take a look. Uh, for this rogue character, what do I use the most? I probably use cutthroat the most which is the bleed so why don't we go ahead and spend the point to increase the bleed damage all right moving on uh this character right here i probably use the celestial blow the most so why don't we increase the damage from that just like that uh, i probably use hmm, i think i use the star vitality the most so we will increase the heal effect from that and then lastly for the tank why don't we go with we could go with better armor, the damage dealer. I don't use that that often. The self-heal. Yeah, why don't we increase the self-heal? There we go. Okay, so those are the skill points. And again, it's just specializing the four abilities that your characters innately have. There's no new abilities that you can swap in and out, but, but you can choose exactly how you want your abilities to work. And the last thing here in the character tabs is just a bit of lore about all of them. That's all. Some people love reading that. I, you know, don't really care that much. All right, let's keep going on. Uh, there's a couple more fights, and then finally a big boss fight that I'd like to show you that I tried once and failed horribly at. I want to see if I can figure it out. If not, I oh well. I am Lech Loras, guardian of the gate. You have no business here. Turn back. Who are you that you know us? As I was in life and am in death. I am Lech Loras, the first wheel sword. I recognize my kin in this world and the next. Why are you bound, spirit? And this stinks of a trap. Yes, indeed. Why are you here? I serve the wheel swords. The lion have called upon the Chimera to destroy the guild. I was honor bound to stop her, but I am not strong enough, and with each passing hour, my strength fades, but there is a chance. Yes? Tell us. If you attack, I will channel the last of my power, and we may just succeed in driving her away. Then will you accompany us to the hold and to the patrons? To discover what has befallen us? I will. I would discover the truth of this, for the wheel swords are life everlasting. 
Now, there has been a f little bit of dialogue, just like the scene that you just saw. And um, while I haven't been too impressed with... Good lord. Uh, while I, <laughs> that was just my mouse bugging out. While I haven't been too impressed with the voice acting in this game overall, um, the, the, the actual dialogue that takes place in combat, I think, has sounded fine. And, uh, yeah. I actually really enjoy the gameplay of this game. I really enjoy the combat system. I like this active pause system. It's something that I have played in other games before. And originally, I'm much more of a, oh, let's just go go right in. I don't want to pause. But the difference with this type of game is that compared to a game without a pause system, you are essentially required to pause for bigger fights because there's so much going on. There are so many enemy abilities and you've got to control uh, your four units and handle all of their abilities, any debuffs that they have, that it, it's it's essentially necessary. So it, it, it's good. It, it, I understand people who might look at it and say, oh boy, this combat system, you get to pause in between fights, that's hard. But it's, it's, it's almost required. It's designed around that functionality. So, and, and there's definitely, uh, there's definitely enjoyment to be had in a system like that. And again, I, I've I've really, really been liking this so far. This actually, I was pleasantly surprised. I was contacted about taking a look at this game, and I said, okay, I've never really heard of it. My mouse bugged out again. Uh, I was contacted about taking a look at this game, and I was like, yeah, I don't know, really, but I guess so. And uh, after actually spending some time with it, <laughs> yeah, I think it's pretty sweet. Okay, so let's take a look here at what we got going on. We have got uh, one elite character here who's got an extra ability which is Enrage Herself to Reflect Damage, or is it this one? Okay, so it's the Enrage Herself to Reflect Damage. What does this ability do? Uh, 20 seconds, uh, increased armor, and a self-heal for 300% of attack damage. Okay, and then there's an attack. And then these ranged guys, they have got a couple abilities. Uh, this one right here, just a magic attack, and this one right here reduces the uh, armor of enemies, and then the extra ability for this one is an immobilize. Now he is probably, oh boy, he's got a lot of uh, a lot of magic defense, but very little physical defense. So for that reason, he is going to be my primary target here uh, for these guys. So let's go ahead and move right in with my physical damage dealers to hit this character right away. And you can focus on this one right here. And I'd actually, yeah, let's just go like that. Okay, so we're gonna just start off like this and then engage in combat, see what they do, and then I will respond. I'm gonna drop some armor here. Okay, and we've got some cast coming. Uh, the cast are actually, they're both going directly for this target. So what I will do is we're gonna throw down a heal preemptively on him and also want to move this one out of the way a little bit just in case that the light beam will continue to move and do damage okay and then I need to move you out of the way oh you still got hit oh well okay so next up is this we got rid of him uh, he can go for he can go for this guy right here now and I want you to focus on this. And actually, why don't I bring you over here? There we go. And everything looks good. Cast some ranged spells. And why are you going for that guy? Leave him alone. And then we're gonna go bleed on him. And then we will throw a heal to him. And then we will nuke him with this. Attack speed. You're fine, you're fine. Don't worry. <laughs> Alright, so it is time for the boss fight. But first we've got some No, we don't have any loot. Oh yes we do. There it is. Okay. So we've got a boss fight now. Just right around the corner. And the first time I came up across this, I got absolutely demolished. I don't even know what happened. Uh, but before we do that, let's take a look at our new pieces of gear here. Uh, increased healing done. Let's take a look at that compared to our healing ring right now. Yeah, that's absolutely, that's great. 
Um, and then, did we get anything else? We got this for magic defense, physical defense, and physical armor. Let's check the tank. Definitely nice there. And then we got a couple of these. Mana regeneration and healing done. Uh, this, one, uh, this one's the same, but not as good. So let's check the healer. Hmm. <laughs> Yeah, why don't we do that? Okay. And then we'll actually check the mage for this one. Now the one that you have is better. All right, so there is my gear. Big old boss fight now. Let's see how it goes this time. I honestly am a little concerned. <laughs> okay, so... Let's take a look at these abilities and see what the heck is going on. Uh, first and foremost, a silence to enemies within 15 meters for 10 seconds. Uh, this is the ability for the Chimera to steal an increase in support effect from a target. Uh, this one right here, a two and a half second channel. And then what will happen is it inflicts 500 magic damage to enemies within eight meters. Now, if the Chimera is affected with at least one with at least an increase effect, so all Chimera needs is one increase effect, all units within 20 meters are inst immediately killed. Wow. Um, <laughs> that is ridiculous. And then this one, 300 physical damage to the target reduces the physical armor by 75%. Now let's take a look at the passives. Uh, let's see. Okay, this is... Oh, okay, that's good. Uh, this one is destroys passively mana within enemies within 7 meters and control effects are reduced. Okay, so I need to get rid of her buffs, essentially. So that's the first thing I'm gonna do. We're gonna go for Mystic Theft, and I'm gonna keep you out of range. And this one, we want to steal any buffs. So let's go with that. Is that... She still has... Okay, those are just the passives. There we go. Oh no. I need to keep you out of the range. Um... Oh boy, I'm gonna have to continue... I'm definitely gonna have to continuously pause here because this is, uh... Pretty ridiculous, to be honest with you. over going like this okay and then let me check your abilities let's give you uh, defense then go for the attack and then you just keep attacking you I want you to heal oh man I'm hoping that I can do this because this would be pretty cool I just need to pay attention to her effects here And again, try to make sure. Okay, I'm gonna steal. And do this. And then back the heck up. And you back the heck up right away. Awesome. I think that worked out fine. Okay. Whew. This is exciting. Alright, so... Let's drop another heal as soon as your silence is done. And then as soon as your silence is done, I'd like you to throw a heal too. Throw a heal, please. I know. I know he's dying. But I think we're okay. Um, you increase your attack speed and then attack. And you can self-heal now. Oh, this is working just fine. This is glorious. Bleed. Okay. I think we might get it. Go ahead and drop a heal. 
Okay, she's doing her thing. I need to remove the buffs right away. So you do that, and then that, and then you you steal, and then you just get away right away. Let's go back in. We've got a little bit of a silence, but we are going, we, we have got this. We have got this. Holy moly. Let's drop some nukes now, huh? Yeah. Oh my. Oh my. We've got a ton of sweet loot here as well. I'm quite excited. And that is going to do it. Uh, we, you might be seeing some more coverage uh, for me on this game. Because I, 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 I like it. I like this active pause system. And the gameplay is uh, pretty smooth and fluid. And, I, and the game looks pretty good as well. So I'm, I'm pretty happy with what I've seen so far of Ark Lash Legacy. Now this game is planning to come out in mid-September of this year. Uh, no exact date, but sometime in the middle of September. Uh, it'll be running at about 20 euros, or it'll be running for 20 euros, which comes out to around $25 USD. Uh, eight total characters in the game with which you can choose four from to make your playthrough. It's a single player game, single player only. You've got a campaign uh, that's supposed to be lasting the campaign is supposed to be lasting anywhere between 15 and 20 hours total. And again, there is character customization through the loot system uh, as well as the skill tree. So there you go. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this. Once again, this has been Force checking out Arc Lash Legacy. I'll be doing probably at least one more follow-up video to this game. It is pretty fun. I like it. Thanks so much for watching. If you like the content, please subscribe. And as always, keep watching and keep owning.